Imagine you're deciding between two hospitals for a critical surgery. You've done your research, and here's what the data shows. City General Hospital, 1,000 surgeries performed last year, 850 successful outcomes. Success rate, 85%. University Medical Center, 1,000 surgeries performed last year, 800 successful outcomes. Success rate, 80%. The choice seems obvious, doesn't it? City General has a higher success rate, 85% versus 80%. You'd be crazy to choose University Medical Center over City General. But what if I told you that University Medical Center is actually the better choice for your surgery? This is the Simpsons paradox, where mathematics reveals that our intuitions about data can be not just wrong, but spectacularly backward. Let's dig deeper into those hospital statistics. It turns out that not all surgeries are created equal. Some are routine procedures with high success rates, while others are complex, high-risk operations where even the best surgeons struggle. Here's the complete picture. Routine surgeries. City general, 800 procedures, 760. Successful, 95% success rate. University, medical, 200 procedures, 196 successful, 98% success rate. Complex surgeries. City general, 200 procedures, 90 successful, 45% success rate. University medical, 800 procedures, 604 successful. 75.5% success rate. Wait a minute. University Medical Center has a higher success rate for routine surgeries, 98% versus 95%, and a dramatically higher success rate for complex surgeries, 75.5% versus 45%. Yet somehow, City General has the better overall success rate. Let's check the math. City General total, 760 plus 90. Successes out of 1,000 equals 850, out of 1,000 equals 85%. University medical total, 196 plus 604. Successes out of 1,000 equals 800 out of 1,000 equals 80%. The numbers are correct. University Medical Center is superior at both types of surgery, yet City General appears better overall. This isn't a mistake. It's Simpson's paradox in action. The key to understanding this paradox lies in recognizing what's really being compared. City General performs mostly easy surgeries, 800 routine, 200 complex, while University Medical Center takes on mostly difficult cases, 200 routine, 800 complex. It's like comparing two basketball players where player A shoots mostly easy layups while player B attempts mostly difficult three-pointers. Player A might have better overall shooting percentage, but player B could be more skilled at every type of shot. The overall average becomes misleading because it's not comparing like with like. One of the most famous real-world examples of Simpson's paradox occurred at UC Berkeley in 1973. The university was accused of gender discrimination in graduate admissions after data showed male applicants, 44% acceptance rate, female applicants, 35% acceptance rate. The nine percentage point gap seemed to provide clear evidence of bias against women. But when researchers examined the data more carefully, they discovered something remarkable. Department A. Engineering. Men, 825 applicants, 511 accepted, 62% acceptance rate. Women, 108 applicants, 89 accepted, 82% acceptance rate. Department B. Literature. Men, 560 applicants, 353 accepted, 63% acceptance rate. Women, 25 applicants, 17 accepted, 68% acceptance rate. Department C. History. Men, 325 applicants, 120 accepted, 37% acceptance rate. Women, 593 applicants, 202 accepted, 34% acceptance rate. Department D, Psychology. Men, 417 applicants, 138 accepted, 33% acceptance rate. Women, 375 applicants, 131 accepted, 35% acceptance rate. In each department, women had equal or better acceptance rates. But because women applied heavily to the most competitive departments, like history and psychology, while men applied more to less competitive ones, like engineering, the overall statistics created an illusion of discrimination. Simpson's paradox shows up in sports statistics with surprising frequency. Consider this scenario from baseball. 1995 season, player A, 300 batting average, player B, 290 batting average. 1996 season, player A, 280 batting average. Player B, 270 batting average. 
Player A had a better batting average in both 1995 and 1996. Logic suggests he must have the better combined two-year average, right? Not necessarily. Here's how it could work out. 1995. Detailed stats. Player A. 30 hits in 100 at-bats, giving a 300 average. Player B. 290 hits in 1,000 at-bats, giving a 290 average. 1996. Detailed stats. Player A. 280 hits in 1,000 at-bats, giving a 280 average. Player B. 27 hits in 100 at-bats, giving a 270 average. Combined two-year stats. Player A. 310 hits in 1,100 at-bats, giving a 282 average. Player B. 317 hits in 1,100 at-bats, giving a 288 average. Player B ends up with the better overall average despite losing both individual years. This happened because player A had most of his at-bats in 1996, which was his worst year, while player B had most of his at-bats in 1995, which was his better year. Simpson's paradox also appears frequently in business metrics. Consider this scenario from a sales company. Q1. Performance. Salesperson A. 85% success rate. Salesperson B. 80% success rate. Q2. Performance. Salesperson A. 75% success rate. Salesperson B. 70% success rate. Salesperson A. Outperformed B in both quarters. Logic suggests A must have the better overall success rate, right? Not necessarily. Here's how it could work out. Q1. Detailed stats. Salesperson A. 85 successful sales out of 100 attempts, giving an 85% success rate. Salesperson B. 800 successful sales out of 1,000 attempts, giving an 80% success rate. Q2. Detailed stats. Salesperson A. 750 successful sales out of 1,000 attempts, giving a 75% success rate. Salesperson B. 70 successful sales out of 100 attempts, giving a 70% success rate. Combined. Two-quarter stats. Salesperson. A. 835 successful sales out of 1,100 attempts, giving a 75.9% success rate. Salesperson B. 870. Successful sales out of 1,100 attempts, giving a 79.1% success rate. Salesperson B ends up with the better overall success rate despite losing both individual quarters. This happened because Salesperson A handled most of their clients in Quarter 2, which was their worst quarter, while Salesperson B handled most of their clients in Quarter 1, which was their better quarter. Simpson's paradox occurs when the relationship between two variables reverses when data is aggregated. Mathematically, this happens when 1. Subgroup sizes are dramatically different between categories being compared 2. The confounding variable, like surgery complexity, department competitiveness, or age, has a strong relationship with both the grouping variable and the outcome 3. The distribution of the confounding variable differs significantly between groups. Simpson's paradox has serious implications in legal settings. Consider this scenario from a discrimination lawsuit. Company hiring data. Department 1. 100 male applicants, 50 hired, 50%. 200 female applicants, 100 hired, 50%. Department 2. 200 male applicants, 40 hired, 20%. 100 female applicants, 20 hired, 20%. Overall. Men, 90 hired out of 300, 30%. Women, 120 hired out of 300, 40%. A prosecutor might argue this shows clear bias in favor of women but examining each department reveals the true picture. The apparent overall bias occurs because men applied more heavily to Department 2, which had lower hiring rates for everyone. Medical research frequently encounters Simpson's paradox, sometimes with life-or-death implications. Consider this study of two treatments. Treatment A, 75% success rate overall. Treatment B, 67.5% success rate overall. But when broken down by patient severity, mild cases, Treatment A. 85% success, 600 patients. Treatment B. 90% success, 100 patients. Severe cases. Treatment A. 60% success, 400 patients. Treatment B. 65% success, 900 patients. Treatment B is superior for both mild and severe cases, yet treatment A appears better overall because it's used primarily on mild cases. This creates a dangerous feedback loop. Doctors see treatment A's impressive overall statistics and use it more often, especially for easier cases, which further inflates its apparent success rate while masking treatment B's superior effectiveness.
The weird math of Simpson's paradox teaches us that, in a world overflowing with data, the most dangerous assumption is that more data automatically means more truth. Sometimes the aggregate picture is not just incomplete, it's completely backward. The next time you see a statistic that seems to prove something definitively, remember the hospitals, the baseball players, ask yourself, what story might the data be hiding? What groups are being lumped together that shouldn't be? What context am I missing? In the age of big data and viral statistics, Simpson's paradox isn't just a mathematical curiosity. It's the essential tool for navigating a world where the most important truths are often hidden in plain sight, disguised as lies by the very numbers that should reveal them.